What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out is the Viper better than the Legend Killer, man? The two personas from Randy Orton that uh, a lot of fans have uh, definitely grown to love or definitely like character-wise from him. His Legend Killer gimmick was fantastic. Him, you know, coming up in the ranks, but his Viper gimmick when he started. Uh, hearing voices in his head and and punting people into the next dimension in my opinion that's always been the best version of randy orton because it, it wasn't more about sport him being a legend killer early in his career was about proving himself but him being the viper ah uh, hearing the voices in his head that's when he was just sadistic and evil because he already proved himself now it was just to just to hurt people because he couldn't be controlled i like that man uh, i i like that version of randy orton but we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support my top 10 all-time favorites he's always been a favorite of mine because of the vibes surrounding him you know at times he's cool calm and collected but in other moments he shows more fury and anger than almost the entire roster his characters have always been interesting to me because of the difference in them on one side you have a man who's extremely arrogant overzealous and very disrespectful and on another is a man who's essentially saw everything and uses his veteran experience like nobody else. He's still disrespectful at a moment's notice, though. Mm -hmm. Both iterations are KO women and hate anything that has to do with legends, and that, coupled with Orton's intelligent and very consistent in ring skills, makes him a favorite of mine. Obviously, not a. And I used to like his old theme music. Hey! Nothing you can say! That, I used to like his old theme music, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Everyone likes him in ring because he doesn't really evolve, especially recently. But you rarely see a terrible match coming from him. Recently, someone will reinvigorate because of the Edge and Riddle storylines, and it's cool seeing him team up with a man who's the total opposite of him. So how does this go? We're gonna be both comparing Legend Killer Randy iteration Orton of Randy Orton with the stash. That's a oh, <laughs> uh, uh, an experienced Randy Orton, the porn stash Randy Orton. We're in that era now. It's from 2003 to 2007, along with the 2020. And on the other side, we have the Viper, who is basically Orton from 2008 to now. I'm mostly focusing on his uh, first heel run. You know, the one where he's bald, he's insane, he's all that. Yeah. We still talk about the other iterations as well. With that said, let's get into it. So, character. Amongst the greatest gimmicks slash characters of the 2000s and the 10s, Randy Orton's has always been near the top of the list. Both of his iterations excelled in interesting the fans and leaving them wanting more. Legend Killer in particular always looked to use notable stars as stepping stones. Bursting onto the scene in 2002, Randy Orton quickly made a name for himself as his blue chipper third generation wrestler. Upon suffering an injury in September of 2002, the rookie developed this character that was extremely conceited and self-centered with the RNN Randy Network News as a platform. Upon his return, he was brought into evolution with the group experience change. Over Overnight, Orin turned into this very arrogant, confident, and truly gifted talent. More mm -hmm. often than not, he targeted legends and placed them on this list. It worked extremely well for his career and launched him to the very top of the WWE card. Which is actually a pretty cool gimmick. To really get somebody over, you had him coin the legend killer. He goes after legends and he takes them out. And that's a good way to really get somebody older. Granted, you get them over in a heel way because a lot of these legends are fan favorites and fan beloved but you have someone that's beating the hell out of her beating the hell out of him or maybe disrespecting him hit him with an rko it gives him that that right amount of good heel heat but he's still progressing within the company Many to this very day still want Orton with the Burn of My Light theme and the Pyro to return. Mm -hmm. Since the Legend Killer was all grown up in 2007, he transitioned into a cold-hearted Viper. Yes. Down was the Burn of My Light theme song. Now he's entering the arena to voices. His talking cadence was much slower as was his entrance and in-ring style, and it was more about dissection, and since Orton had loads of experience around this time period, it made sense for him to evolve. At times, the Ball-headed Randy Orton was dangerous. <laughs> when he was bald, it's like when you go bald in wrestling, you just become more dangerous. <laughs> Viper was unhinged and borderline insane as evident by his entire 2009. This man mm -hmm. was kicking his boss in the head, kissing his rival's wife, yep. took Batista out, and attempted to blow John Cena up. The Legend Killer and the Viper do share similarities, I should know. You know, at times they were insane. Although in the Legend Killer's case, it's few and far between. With the only sadistic stuff he did off the top of my head were destroying Eddie Guerrero's lowrider and setting a casket containing the Undertaker mm -hmm. on fire. Who do I think is better? Well, this might be a very hot take, but I'm going to go with the Viper. Why the Viper? Because the character had more promising storylines and they felt a lot deeper. Now, I'm not saying the Legend Killer didn't have... Hey, this is kind of one of the things I said as well. I like the Viper. I like the, the version of him where he was trying to kick people into the, another dimension. <laughs> I like I like that that version of him. That was the best version of him because he was so sadistic, so evil, and you just wanted to see him get his ass kicked. 
but you knew all it would take is an RKO and it was all over or a punt to the skull and it was all over. Like he didn't care who he was. And, and that's what made him a, a, such a good heel character at that time. I have none. You know, the Undertaker story was something else and it showed that Randy Orton, you know, the legend character could go much deeper than he usually does. It perfectly suited Orton in the early days. He was desperate to make a name for himself. Once he reached the top, I don't think it made sense for him to be the legend killer. And it was cool that he brought mm -hmm. it back recently. The Viper, he was just more wild and unpredictable. You know, that's the reason why it's called that. It's a great thing that he transitioned into something else. Moving on from characters, I'd like to talk about each iteration's heel side. In the Legend Killer side, Orn really knew how to play that role well. To the point where he was such a bad face. His facial expressions were hilarious along with his random childish outbursts such as this. Oh, and who can forget about the pose in him constantly undermining the likes of Rey Mysterio. This man was always roasting the crowd asking if they ever talked to a girl and had a random outburst. He'd always get embarrassed by The Rock or John Cena and the crowd would just lap it up with his goofy expressions <laughs> and the icing on top. It was something else and there have been many young douches that have come and gone in pro wrestling, but Randy Orton's Legend Killer was probably my favorite. The gimmick itself made a sudden return in 2020 after mm -hmm. Orton was desperate to keep Edge away from the squared circle. He was back to dropping women and taking out legends, and this run was a nice refresher because Orton had been doing the same thing for a while. It was so damn good that most of the people I saw discussing wrestling wanted him to be that champion. You know, in the past it's often a conflicting topic, but here the fans are positive towards an Orton title. And even now there's still people that would like to see Randy Orton as a champion, and I don't think there's a problem with him maybe getting one more run with the championship or maybe even you know becoming a un the universal champion at some point later down the line but it, it has to make sense because randy he's done it all so it's it's not like you need to have him at the top of the card if anything if you do have him at the top of the card it should be to potentially big up another star so it could happen i wouldn't mind seeing it happening it just has to make sense on how he gets the title. That's all I'm saying. Title reign. I play stay here because of the fact that it was simply the legend killer. I was almost featuring on the Viper's side, but that would have been stupider than Raw 2018. Heel Viper, though, was different, and I truly yeah. mean this. There was nobody like him on the roster at the time. Orn, despite the PG rating, was a very compelling villain, especially because WWE was almost a kid show at the time. He was mm -hmm. pure evil with the bald look and the slow walk to the ring. Hell, this man even stopped doing the pose for a short time period after changing his character. Unlike his previous self, his composure was at an all-time high, and he always struck with intensity. Orn was manipulative, remorseless at times, and just overall an insane person. Yeah. And again, I just like to say this. His facial expressions and body language really added to this character. One moment he kicks somebody, and the next it's like he's in another world realizing what he had done. And I like that. That is good character development because he was literally hearing voices in his head and the way he was portraying it. Like he would literally hurt someone, but then he'd be like, damn, what did I do? I, I like that, man. That that That's the Randy Orton. I, I definitely uh <laughs> definitely grew to, to hate but appreciate when it came to like his on-screen presence. One was in every sense of the word heinous. For this one, I can't really choose the legend killer. That would basically be me trying to make the score interesting, and she's got to be the Viper. Orange showed more depth, emotion, and fury than he had ever did in the Legend Killer run. It's as if he lived and breathed as this sociopath who didn't yeah. give a damn who he pissed off from the likes of Jeff Hardy to Triple H. Throughout the years, Orin as his heel Viper is just always so interesting. I remember he turned heel back in 2018 and fans were so excited to see him as this villain again. Because Orin, he just knows how to play that role very well. Yes, his best year as, as this heel. Viper was 2009. He looked like a snake, a truly insane person, and was also unpredictable. In other years, he showed more composure and wasn't exactly insane. But he had some wild thoughts in his mind, such as ripping Jeff Hardy's ear off. Yeah. He had another easy win for the Viper, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, Babyface is next. The one area where Orton struggles. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is, he didn't have a lengthy run where he was truly a great good guy. Often talking about him, his best runs have been as the villain. The Legend Killer side had an extremely short run, which saw Randy Orton show that he wasn't the best good guy. Orton did a sudden 180, and while he was still over, something was off. At times, it felt try-hardish slash forced, and even though he was fun to watch, he was constantly losing to Triple H when it mattered most, and by then, a certain animal had more momentum by their side. It wasn't that Rock 99 face turn where he was the same guy except to heels. It was a full-on baby face, and if all of those things I mentioned weren't bad enough, he wasn't a baby face outside of the arena. Some of the fans did turn on him by the beginning of 2005, if you listen to the crowd. Things could have gone down differently if they were booked another way. As to the Viper, well, I'd say this was a bit more successful, although it's inconsistent. Now, 
Throughout his entire runs as a babyface, Orton has been massively over. All he needs to do is go for the pose, the second rope DDT, and the RKO. His yeah. 2010 run was ridiculous from a crowd reacting standpoint. You know, not many guys to that era of WWE received such a loud reception as the Viper did on a weekly basis. He'd go out there and RKO faces and heels alike without the wrist tape, which I still find weird to this day. Like, it kind of makes me uncomfortable, but at the time, Orin really clicked. What I really liked about this run was the fact that Orin had that PG Stone Cold edge to him in the sense that it didn't matter if it was a guest host or a GM, he'd RKO their ass. He RKO'd Wayne. Yeah, uh, and, and that's... That's why he could work as a face. He, he's always been better as a heel. But when he was able to transition as a face, it worked because who don't like seeing an RKO? Anyone can get an RKO. Heel or face and, you know, the pose, the infamous pose. Like, it, it just always, those things that he does, heel or face, will always be over with the crowd. So he can dibble and dabble in it when he wants to. Wayne Brady. Of all people, Wayne Brady took a damn market, yo. Truly a lone wolf in every sense of the word. And after moving to SmackDown, he started losing his mind much more. He grew that beard, he started to drop Christian on a weekly basis, and even lost the world title to him by DQ. He also randomly did the splits. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, the He's excitement would fade away after he exited the title picture and would just coast along for two years not doing much. Thinking about Randy Orton 2012, there's not much to say about it. Back to being a babyface in 2015, mm -hmm. Orton was dropping Seth Rollins, roasting him, going on an RKO rampage, and even infiltrated the Wyatt family to hit Bray where it hurts the most. I'd say this was a bit of a downgrade compared to his original face turn in 2010 because these moments were few and far between. Like, off the top of my head, all I remember is Orin returning at Battleground. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, but sometimes I actually forget he faced Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. at SummerSlam. Recently, he's done some interesting work with Riddle, although I sense it's coming to an end real soon. Yeah. But overall, Orin has a baby face. I can see that happening. I don't know if Randy will turn. It would make sense if Randy was to turn heel on, uh, on um, Matt Riddle. And maybe they can, they'll have a program and they can potentially put over Matt Riddle. But you can, it's, it's going to happen at some point. He's decent, but we all know how good he is as a villain. He just knows how to play that role very well. And it makes his face runs look bad. For this one, though, I think it's easy. It's the yeah. Viper. You know, he literally had one run as the Legend Killer and it was so underwhelming. And some of it wasn't on him, of course, but... His run was so short that he turned heel before WrestleMania 21. And I'm not saying the Viper was a world-class babyface or anything like that, but he was definitely doing well in his early days, and even when he's coasting along, he's got some of the best fan reactions. The Legend Killer, on the other hand, was getting booed towards the end of his babyface run, so that makes it 3-0. to zero. This has been a thumping, but trust me, it is far from over. In-ring. This is an area that Randy Orton has no problem with. Obviously, many complaints with Orton as an in-ring performer has to do with the fact that he hasn't evolved. You know, while he is one of, if not the most gifted wrestlers of the past 20 years, Randy didn't really update his moveset over the years. Mm -hmm. He plays True. it safe, which results in a decent to good match, but not something everyone knows he's truly capable of. Nonetheless, he's very sound and perfect with the pacing and the movements during his match. He knows when and how to do what he does. Add to that, his moveset fits his character like a glove. He's that slow, methodical guy that solely inflicts damage on the opponent by dissecting them and wrestling at a slow pace. Yeah. So let's talk about his sledge killer run first or at such a young age show just how gifted he was in the ring he obviously was he's third generation super athletic bro man was he super athletic he's still athletic but in his younger years man, jumping he was just jumping off the ring <laughs> off the canvas just effortlessly hitting boys with beautiful drop kicks so it's in his blood but this caused him to be a can't miss prospect he had this hunger and drive to show everybody that he's pretty damn good and he just showed a lot of experience despite being so young of course, he wasn't as polished as nowadays, but I really enjoy going back and watching some matches from the years of 2003 to 2006, because mm -hmm. this man was solely focused on leaving a lasting impression. As to the Viper, this is clearly where Orin was more complete and he was more experienced. He knew who he was as an earring performer and performed it perfectly. He has impeccable timing, knew when to pick up the heat, and in 2011, in my opinion at least, he was the very best in-ring performer. By then, he had those quick movements now and was trying out some new stuff such as the Olympic Slam. His in-ring psychology, though, is something else. World-class quality, which helps his case. Unfortunately, because Orin does more of the same, it doesn't leave room for reinvention. He just mm -hmm. knows what to do, how to do it, and it gets the fans popping, you know? But among the reasons why Orin doesn't do new stuff, of course, has to do with risking injury. It's best to leave something untouched because with this style of wrestling, he could wrestle as long as he wants to. As for who wins this tie, while Orin was much smoother and had more experience in his Viper iteration, I have to give this to Legend Killer. Orin was just mm. more ambitious. During his yeah, the, when it came to his moveset, just to see how it, explosive he was in the ring, and it just came off like, yo, I'm... I'm I'm going to show you why I'm a third-generation wrestler. 
and why I deserve to be here and why y'all should show me the respect that I deserve. I I, I like that version. His moveset was so fresh and just like, like you can tell he was he had something to prove. And there's nothing wrong with uh, Randy Orton moveset now, but we you know we know he he's definitely more about trying to have longevity, trying to have as few injuries as possible. But he still can pull out a solid match. You know, it's not too many times you can say Randy Orton just had a bad match. Like, he can pull out a solid match uh, depending on the opponent. You know, he's able to work with actually a lot of different opponents. So His time as a young upstart, he really wanted to go all out. There's not a problem with the Vipers wrestling, but you could feel that the Legend Killer put more effort into his matches. He was out there trying aerial moves, showing more athleticism. Mm -hmm. Adds that his very best matches are, are arguably from the 2000s. His matches with Edge, The Undertaker, Cactus Jack, Chris Benoit, and Rey Mysterio. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it might be a hot take, but I just like his younger self more because he was faster and showed an intelligent mind at such a young age. Mike skills. More often than not, Orin's never really been known for his mic skills. Of course, he's solid in recent years, very, very good. Yeah. He's really turned it around and turned it into a strength of his. But even Orin himself acknowledged that he hasn't been the best on the mic. Now, though, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. During the Legend Killer run, Orin showed confidence and arrogance on the microphone. He has a couple of memorable promos under his belt from this iteration, and he was always roasting the fans, bragging about how he's young and accomplished more than they have, and just playing his role very well. Fast forward to 2020, and Orin was hotter than he had been in a while. He took advantage of the situation at hand and cut these very deep and emotional promos about Edge and Ric Flair, and this was a nice departure from his usual self, speaking with those buzzwords and whatnot. It, it just felt more authentic. The Viper is where it's weird. What I mean by that is he had a couple of memorable promos early on, but after turning face, uh, I don't really remember much. Matter of fact, I remember nothing from Orin in that area. He was cutting some very forgettable promos, although there were some things, such as this promo on Seth Rounds, you know, showed so much fury and frustration. Yeah, the promo he had on Seth Rounds when he turned face, that was, that was actually nice. When he was talking about what he's going to do to him, like how he's going to get him back. Oh, yeah. That was actually that was actually pretty nice. Over him and the way he spoke, it made him sound crazy and out of this world. Yeah. There's a couple as well, but for this one, I'm going to have to go with the Legend Killer. Because he showed so much confidence and had a lot to prove. So much to his in-ring skills. He was hungry and craving success. And obviously, I can't seem to remember much of the babyface promos from 2004 to 2005 because they're not memorable. But other than that, he was a good heel on the mic. He was very fun as well with the random insults to the fans. And the way he sold the babyfaces as a response was something else. 3-2, to two, Viper still in the lead. I almost didn't add this, but felt it was necessary. That being moments. Randy Orton throughout his career has had a plethora of moments. From winning the Intercontinental Championship to mm -hmm. capturing the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. In terms of moments, he's up there with the very best from the WWE roster. In the Legend Killer's case, there's many. Joining Evolution. Beating HQ at the Brass Knucks. Showing up against Mick Foley. Yep. Winning the world title at 24. And of course, the Undertaker feud in general. Hell, we can add rated RKO to the list as well. These are iconic moments. What does the Apex Predator have? He won the WWE title twice in one night. Punted Triple H at WrestleMania 24. Destroyed the McMahon family. Turning on Legacy. RKO out of nowhere on Evan Bourne. Yeah. The Christian feud. Joining the Authority. Super RKO on Seth Rollins. <laughs> the Super RKO on Seth Rollins. That was such a beautiful spot. Oh my god, the timing on that was beautiful. Oh, that was that was great. Ripping Jeff Hardy's ear. Oh, a bunch yeah. of stuff, but I don't want to sound redundant. Come to think about it, I kind of did. But for this one, it was honestly a struggle to choose which one. On one side, Orrin had so many moments that are still replayed to this day within a four-year span. On the other, it's not like he didn't have moments. It's just they were stretched out over ten years. I went back and forth on this. I thought long and hard. The thing that goes against the Legend Killer is the fact that Orton didn't have the gimmick for 10 years. But mm -hmm. that also shows just how good he was in this iteration to have that many moments. So, I chose the Legend Killer. These moments shaped Orton into what he is today. And the insane part is he was in his 20s the entire time. Like, compare that to most of the roster nowadays. Obviously, WWE was high on Orton, but he was talented. You can't say the same for any of the young guys that debuted in their 20s. You know, despite showing potential, there's not many people that have a collection of moments as large as Orton's did mm -hmm. in his 20s. You know, this guy has more moments in his 20s than a bunch of people have throughout their entire career. So nice. that's why I chose the Legend Killer. So it's 3 of 3, and the tiebreaker is looking at him overall as a talent. Once again, this is my opinion. I didn't want to get it to this point, but it has. As the total package, Randy Orton is just that. He can talk, has the look, wrestles effortlessly, has charisma, and of course, an amazing finisher. Both the Legend Killer and the Viper suited him perfectly in those times of his career. But I'm going to be honest, I just feel like Orton was born to be the Viper. 
Don't get me wrong. He's something else. Yeah. Is a legend his killer. His arcade on legends meant to be post the pyro, but the viper was now. more unpredictable and had the habit of doing some random ass stuff. Yeah. Orin by then had perfected the art of facial expressions and knew how to do all the little things right. He reinvented himself and in doing so cemented his place in the main event scene. Now I did have an argument for the legend killer. Now could have gone either way. My argument for the legend killer is based on the fact that his very best match and possibly his best feuds were during this time period. People still talk about the legend killer despite all the work Orin did as the apex predator. Mm -hmm. And this is just a tiny thing but I just love the moniker the legend killer. And if I made this video two years ago for sure my final choice would be different. So that's who's better. I, I brought it back again. Not gonna lie to you guys. I actually did think the legend killer was a bit better than, than the viper. The legend killer is iconic. People still talk about it to this very day. But I just think the viper is better for Randy Orton. Alright, what did you guys think of this video? Please comment down below. That's this was a dope video, man. Interesting uh, conversation to have. I've already said the Viper version of Randy Orton, when he started putting people in the head, was honestly the best version of him. It was more methodical. He was more sadistic. He just had this, this control about him, but at the same time, he would lose himself. It, it, it just worked. It, from my in my personal opinion it just worked as a good character shift for him so comment down below let me know which version of randy orton do you guys prefer the legend killer or the viper let me know down below appreciate all the love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking to me see y'all in the next one peace